In this tutorial, we will explain how to analyze forms on a website to identify which form fields have a negative impact on conversion and why. We will do so using an example of a simple registration form, which you can find on many e-commerce websites. To use the forms report and use it better analytics, you need to set up a form completion funnel. First, let's specify the page on which the process with the form starts. In this tutorial, we want to analyze the registration form which is placed on the Account Register HTML page. We will use this page as the first step of the funnel. If you would need to analyze a form that is available on various pages, like a search form, you should leave this field empty. The final step of the funnel is required. It allows the forms report to reliably differentiate between visits in which a form or a process behind that form was completed successfully or not and automatically provide useful insights. On our demo website, users who successfully register land on the account.html page and that will be our final step. If you have a multi-step form spread across multiple pages, you can select the last page in the process to analyze form activity on all of the steps. By default, a report is based on the last 5,000 visits in the currently selected segment, which in our case contains visits from desktop devices. Once we hit the Load Sample button, we will see the Form Completion Funnel. The funnel consists of three steps. In the first step, we have all the visits from the sample in which users went to the Account Register HTML page. In the second step, we have visits in which users completed at least one form field after they visited the registration page. Finally, in the last third step, we have the successful visits in which users reached the Account.html page and hence successfully registered. We can see how many visits were lost after each of the steps. If the number of visits in which users dropped out without completing a form field is high, it usually means two things. Either the user decided that the form does not serve their purpose, or that the form does serve their purpose, but perhaps it is too long or asks about data that users don't have or don't want to provide. In this case, the number is very low, which is good. However, we can see that 64% of users who completed at least one form field failed to register, and that's not okay. Let's try to find out what happened in those visits. Once you click the Analyze button next to the number of failed visits, you will see a table with form-related events. There are three types of events, completed form fields, submitted forms, and received errors. The events are sorted by the average order in which those events occurred in visits. Next to each event, you can see in what percentage of visits this event happened. Since we have selected to analyze only the visits in which users failed to complete the funnel after they completed at least one form field, we could read this data as follows. The account title field was completed in 79.2% of visits in which the users failed to register after they started filling in the registration form. The big black asterisks next to some of the events indicate which events happened in every successful visit and therefore are likely to be required to complete the form. There is no asterisk next to the account title field, so this field is optional, and the percentage below 100% doesn't mean that there is a problem with this field. The account phone number, on the other hand, is a required field, and yet the table shows us that in 20.8% of the failed visits, the visitors skipped it. This metric leads us to two immediate insights. The first one is that the field isn't properly marked and the website's layout is required. Otherwise, users wouldn't just skip the field, but would rather abandon the form right after the previous field, which is the year of birth field. The second insight is, of course, that users don't want to provide the phone number, and we should consider making that field either optional or explain in details why we ask visitors for a phone number. The values in the next column tell us the difference between the shares of visits with a certain event in the failed and the successful visits. Since the phone number field is a required field and was completed in 100% of the successful visits, 
the difference is minus 20.8 percentage points. You can see that for the account title, the value is in black. This means that the field was completed more often in failed than in the successful visits, and its completion may have a negative impact on conversion. The average editing time tells us how much time users spend on a certain form field. If the value is high, you may consider improving fields' usability. You should pay particular attention to fields for which the field editing time is different in the failed and the successful visits. The next column tells us in what percentage of visits users corrected the values they entered into each field. I'll sort the events based on that value by clicking on the column header. The fields that are most often corrected are the password and the phone number, followed by password repeat and the year of birth. If you click on the eye icon, you will see how exactly users were correcting their entries. Let's look at the phone number field. On the left, there are phone numbers corrected in the failed visits, and on the right, the numbers corrected in the successful visits. As you can see, even though the values entered into the input fields are anonymized to protect visitors' privacy, we can still observe in what format the phone numbers were entered. In both the failed and the successful visits, users were removing white spaces and dashes they used to separate groups of digits. They were also adding or eliminating a country code prefix from the numbers. That's a clear insight that we should either provide an example in what format we expect users to fill in the field, or even better, allow users to enter data in any form and automatically convert it into the desired format in the background. We should also work to make the related error message more descriptive, as in many cases it took visitors more than one correction to succeed. The next column shows the number of unique values entered into a field. This information can be very insightful, as it is in the case of a phone number field. This form accepts phone numbers in just three possible formats, yet there were nine unique values entered in failed visits. Again, by clicking on the eye icon, you can compare what numbers were entered in the failed and the successful visits. This way you can easily spot what values or formats were acceptable and which weren't. Use It Better automatically detects patterns that have a negative impact on conversion. In this case, it tells us that 32% of phone numbers in failed visits weren't numbers in a mathematical sense, and 21% were entered using digits and white spaces only, and such formats were not entered in any of the successful visits. Other interesting insights that surfaced automatically is that in the year of birth field, 17% of values were greater than the highest value in the successful visits, which was 1998. Apparently, some visitors were underage and not allowed to register. Of course, the more data you have, the more accurate the automated insights are. The last column, Immediate Exits After Event, tells us how often each event happened last in the failed visits. In 4% of visits, visitors left the website immediately after the day of birth field. And massive 96% of exits happened right after the visits received a form validation error. We can see that there were seven different errors, and Use It Better alerts us that three of them had a significant impact on conversion. To see all the errors, click on the eye icon. There's so much more you can do with Use It Better to analyze forms on your website, but even the insights you get out of the box should help you improve conversion of your forms.